My name is David, aka Grand Pooh Bear. I am a Red Bull gaming athlete, um, but growing up, my dream was to be a snowboarding athlete. Snowboarding was my whole life growing up. I went to college to snowboard. I dropped out of college so I could snowboard more. I moved to Lake Tahoe so I could snowboard even more. And that was my dream for the longest time. And then one day, I was hit by a skier. That left me with a lot of injuries, internal injuries. I broke my kneecap, tore my MCL, and I broke my L1 vertebrae. I spent about five months in and out of the hospital, and I was really, really lucky that I was able to recover mostly. While I would never snowboard as good as I could again, I was lucky enough to find uh, a new passion in speed running and gaming, which kind of led me to my ultimate goal of being a Red Bull athlete, just for gaming and not for snowboarding. You know, once I started to learn about Wings for Life and learn about the work they were doing and the progress they were making, um, it just became such a, a passion of mine. If I can help someone who may not have had the opportunity to do that, like, why wouldn't you, you know? People take, like, they hear my passion about it and then they become passionate about it and share that passion. And it just, it means the world to me. And I just want to thank all the viewers out there that have really helped contribute to this. Um, this is only happening because of you. So we're at University of Texas, Dallas. I'm going to tour a research project. We're going to see some of the fruits of our labor, where some of the money we have raised is actually going, and seeing the progress that we're making on literally ending paralysis from spinal cord injuries. I'm here with Dr. Kilgard, and we're going to learn about what you've been working on. Sure, so we've been working for 50 years now trying to understand the brain well enough to be able to help people where, who have problems. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems we're gonna talk about today is spinal cord injury, where someone's had a damage typically in the neck, but it can be in other places. And then they're unable to move their hands and arms and legs and feet as well as they did before. Uh, and so we're gonna try to find ways of making new connections after those connections have been damaged. Yeah, and so what is the way we're gonna be making that connection today then specifically? Because it's real exciting, I, I just heard about this. It's an implant, right? It's an implant, that's right. We started with deep brain stimulation and we decided that most people don't want to have to have brain surgery. So <laughs> we went through a long period of trying to see what medication could you take to make new connections and what cells could you add. And we had some trouble with both of those approaches. So we come back around to electrical stimulation, and uh, this is a human head. There's a nerve in the uh, neck of every one of us, and it runs about this size, and we've developed a tiny little implant that can go directly on the nerve itself. And uh, when you put that in, it's a single quick surgery. It takes about half an hour to put in. Oh. And then after that, if you're doing rehabilitation, someone, maybe their hand only moves a little bit, we can reward the brain right when those little bit of movement's happening find those connections that are still connected all the way down to the arm and see if we can strengthen those connections to move a little bit to a lot and eventually to restore function. Which is like incredibly life-changing for someone that doesn't have use of their hands. That can change their entire world, right? Like that's like huge, that, yeah. That, that's the goal. We're not yeah. just trying to make a little signal change a little bit or uh, change some test result. We don't be able to be able to take care of their children and take care of themselves and be independent. Uh, that's a big goal. It takes a long time to do that. We're mm -hmm. not quite there yet. But for people who've got some function, our goal and what we've been seeing is we can increase those gains by doing rehabilitation, which already works pretty well, and add this extra boost so that those connections are stronger and longer lasting. How do games kind of work into the work you're doing? Yeah, so if you imagine um, needing to do 10,000 hours to get really good at the violin, how are you going to do 10,000 hours to rotate your wrist? It's going to be pretty boring. <laughs> so we can ask them to do what we call repetitions. That's the most basic form, jumping jacks, push-ups. It's just boring to sit mm -hmm. and do that. So what we've done is taken sort of standard uh, Android tablet and thrown some games on it. Simple things, but they're good enough to pass the time. They're good enough to see, make my little spaceman fly up and down. And that's enough, especially when it's hard to make this movement, right? For us, moving yeah. the joystick is easy, goes back and forth. That's not the problem. It's the timing, the precision, the, the gameplay, multidimensional. For them, we're isolating it down to a single movement. We're saying, I want to work on the wrist. And so we can make it where the knob doesn't turn, and so it's just the strength of the move, or that it does turn, and now it's how far can you move it. Those are examples where now they're seeing that arm move, and then we can say, your high score from before was 1,400. Today you're at 1,500. And what we know is that extra 100 points really means something. Sometimes video games will trick you into thinking you're better because your sword is better, whatever else. We don't do that. When your score gets better, that's because you're doing better. All right, so now we're seeing what the actual people with spinal cord injury are gonna be taking home. This is the same technology they're using in the clinic 
and we've been able to get it into a form small enough and cheap enough we can take it home. So what we're going to do now is walk through some of the exercises that you might be doing if you've had a spinal cord injury and you want to learn how to do those. Okay. The Put pucks. one puck on each of these 11 and 2. 2 and 11. There you go. Okay. And now we're going to practice a simple driving game. So you're going to... Oh, you can. it like registers. It's going to yeah. register. When you push down on it, you can feel the vibration. Yeah. You see the lights come on? Yeah. So these are the simplest game controllers in the world. Normally, what you're going to be doing is wearing a device like this around your neck. So go ahead and put that on. Yeah. And this device is going to be talking to this tablet, sending a wireless Bluetooth signal to here. It's going to be electrically activating the device in your neck if you had one implanted. You wouldn't be able to feel it. It's a tiny current to a nerve. It's very sensitive. So you don't actually feel anything. But each time the nerves are being activated while you're doing this movement, you're strengthening the connection to those muscles. And that's giving you all data on what? That gives us data on the, all the gameplay. The we're trigger. measuring everything that's happening here. We're measuring everything that's happening on the game. And we're measuring when we deliver the activation to the neck. And then you can see what I need to turn up, what exactly. I need. Exactly. So then cool. we can use that to communicate what the device delivers. Oh, exactly. This is so cool, yeah. So now you're going to put your fingers in there, your thumb in, and. Oh, thumb, thumb in. And oh, like thing. pinching, okay. Yep, like a pinch. It should be pretty sensitive. So if you um, pinch a little bit, it should go one direction. If you extend a little bit, it should go the opposite direction. Your goal is to stay in the lane marked by the arrow. And then get the coins that go by without hitting the cars. Okay. So you're not going to hit that pink car. You're going to swerve around it, get that coin, which works a thousand points, and then you're going to zoom over there, right? All right, all right. A little bit of 3D effects. There's some things that are passing yeah. by you, but not exactly overwhelming. I tell you what, this uh, is a lot more fun than <laughs> the do, just reps. Just doing the reps. Yeah, this is exactly. a lot more fun. Like yeah. I'm already super focused on this. I'll make two changes next time. There'll be more cars on the road and you're going to have to pinch a lot harder, just to give you a sense from where you might start off to where you might progress to during the course of therapy. Why don't you go and hit a car just to see what that looks like as well. Everybody likes it, it says, oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to have to squeeze, pinch squeeze a lot harder. Pinch. It's going to be harder. Again, it's set for someone's spinal cord injury, so it shouldn't be impossible for you. It seems still pretty easy for you, is that right? Uh, you, I mean, trust that? me, I'm squeezing okay, a lot squeezing harder. Okay, okay, I'm okay. squeezing a lot harder yeah. for this one, yeah. It definitely, like that first one, I was just, that was full blown. You were, you were barely having a control. Actually, yeah. you gotta work hard to keep it light sometimes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. and there you already died. And then a lot more traffic, too. I was a, That was a bad bad lane change right there. Let me, let me, get, let me make something All cool right. happen. I'm waiting for like a, a Fast and Furious type. Oh, you wanna, you wanna slalom through some cars? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, we gotta, oh, that one was too close. <laughs> that was, I almost made it. But, all right, here we go. That, uh, that was too, yeah, it was too bold. Too yeah. bold. <laughs> yeah. We thought about having it when you change the gain that your car actually changes, because you can feel it's a little slower. Yeah. And actually swapping it out with the, the like the 16 wheeler, or 18 wheeler, so that when you got the big one, you have to really turn the uh, wheel harder. Yeah. Uh, and when it's lighter, you get a little ca car, but we didn't ever uh, get to that. So this one is gonna be. You hold this puck at an angle like that. You're mm -hmm. going to be using the puck's angle to adjust the angle of a bow. Oh. And then you're going to be squeezing to shoot the bow. So it's going to be like this. One you hand? Hold it like this. Yeah, one okay. hand. You're going to go up and down. It's just the blue one is the magic better of the two. And you're going to squeeze like that. Oh. So, okay, so you got to start in the neutral position. You'll see when oh. I rotate the bow, I've now okay. got this pineapple that needs to be okay. shot. So if I need to center it, this would be. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We want you to practice getting your wrist to an uncomfortable position. So squeeze hard. There you go. So that's how it feels to them. And it's hard to keep stable, just like pulling a trigger or yeah. throwing a ball. If you got to throw further, it's hard to be accurate. So you can sort of feel that your accuracy is going down when I've got to squeeze. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because I'm squeezing and then You're squeezing it's... and then things are moving. Yeah. That's much, much worse with someone with spinal cord injury. Yeah. All the muscles try to move at the same time. Usually we'll see someone's other leg moving. Something else. You know, just on a video game when you're lean and all that stuff that isn't doing oh, anything. Oh, I'm a leaner. Are you really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So they would get a lot of co-contraction, a lot of other muscles, see the other arm moving, see the jaw moving, and they're trying to learn not to do that. So we'll be saying, hey, try to relax that. Get them to use all those muscles together. This is our most complicated game. I mean, the typing is a little bit more. No, yeah, I um, totally can see It's not this. just one dimension, it's two dimensions. Yeah. The rotation and the squeezing. Yeah. I mean, this is not easy for me to make an accurate shot. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine, yeah. Nobody said this is too easy or too boring, so we left it here. But there's some chances for us to sort of take it to the next level. All right, well, let's, let's go to the next game. Space A rolling. classic 2D scroller. I, I you, like that. Do you, you, know, do you like 2D that's scrollers? What I am, that's what I'm known for. All right, yeah, well, then you're really right. going to be in good shape. Yeah. Everything except the coins you don't want to hit. 
would an hour of this be too much? We normally do five minutes and then we switch to something else. So it's kind of like the mini games. Isn't there a Mario Kart or something where there's lots of mini games? Yeah. That's kind of how we do it. If you love this game, good, we're coming back to it because we only have six. We're going to rotate through them. <laughs> and so you get to come back to this, but you don't want to totally get zoned in of like, okay, I've played this for a long time. So mostly we stop after five minutes and that's because the muscles do eventually get tired and we think the learning is better if you space it out a little space bit it, yeah. and you're mixing because in a real world, you'd only be cutting for a few minutes uh, before you switch to something else. What's one of the more common things people want to learn? Like, what are one of the most common things? Number one thing people are asking for is open a water bottle. If you squeeze too hard and you open it, it squirts water all over you. <sighs> Breaking that cap off is hard. They get thirsty like all the rest of us. Yeah. And so they want to be able to do that and can't. I just love the personalization. And I think that's kind of like at the base of it, like everyone's injury is a very personal experience, you know? And what they can and can't do, what they want to be able to do, what their life was like before, what their life's gonna be like after. It's all so personal and specified that it's really cool to see you guys recognize that and understand that like, you know, these people need, what everyone needs is different for that day. And you have set up a situation to help them out so anyone that comes in can, you know, help and train whatever they need that day. Like That's whatever's right. their That's most right. immediate And as they concern. make progress, we can then move yeah. to the next thing that they yeah. have. What we saw was an implant that is helping people with spinal cord injuries uh, recover movement in their arms with great hope that it might help recover more. I think the thing that blew my mind today was I, I didn't realize that A, we were, anyone was using implants like this. B, I didn't realize that it was um, kind of evolved from a, an already you know, previous use. So this is something that's known, it's something that's safe, um, something that's ready, kind of ready to go. It kind of blew my mind that we're so close, you know? I still thought something like that was like a decade out, but seeing here that, you know, I, I watch videos today of people after 30 sessions having drastically different movement in their hands, and that's wild to me. That's, that's 30 sessions, that's a month, essentially, of work with this implant. And, and I think about what could happen over a year or two years or 10 years of them working on that and, and how far it could go. And it's just, it's so exciting. It's just so exciting to, to think about that, you know? I knew money was an issue, but just talking to the doctor, hearing him say that, you know, we could have this implant out in the world in three years if, if money wasn't an issue. And I think about all the people right now that just would love to have any sort of movement in their hands or any sort of extra ability of independence. And I think about the fact that in three years, those people could be well on their way to that if we can raise enough money. It's just like, I already was convicted, but I'm leaving here more convicted that this spinal cord injuries are, they're just an injury. And we're gonna find the right medicine in my lifetime to fix them. The fact that people like Emmanuel have traveled all across the world, uprooted their entire life, left their families to come learn and be inspired and help these people is just awesome. And it's people like this that really remind you how good humans can be to each other when we want to be. If I can leave you guys with one thing, um, please keep donating. Every single dollar you see is gonna go to places like this. Your dollars are gonna make a serious impact on spinal cord injury right now today. This is not a 10-year problem we're gonna solve. This is something that we can fix right now for people.